Hey everyone, and welcome back to Cruising with Matthew. Today, I'm going to give you an overview of Holland America's newest ship, Rotterdam, which I was lucky enough to visit in October 2022. So, I really hope you enjoy this video. Before I start, I want to highlight today's sponsor, which is My Kind of Cruise. They are the world's first and only mobile app where you can search, compare and book a cruise across a range of cruise lines, including Holland America. I've actually booked with them for my April 2023 cruise on board the fabulous P&O Britannia and I was super impressed with their high standards of customer service and good prices. So if you want to check them out yourselves, then click on the link in the description below. Now on with the video. So I was kindly invited by Holland America to visit Rotterdam whilst she was anchored off the coast of Plymouth as part of their 150th anniversary celebrations. It was really special to be invited on board as she was partway through a cruise which was retracing the same route as her namesake Rotterdam did 150 years ago. Now, as I was only on board for a couple of hours, I wasn't able to do the full comprehensive ship tours that I usually do, but hopefully this will give you an idea as to what you can expect on board this fantastic ship. Rotterdam is a pinnacle class ship, sharing many design features as her sister ships Koningsdam and also New Statendam. She weighs in at just under 100,000 gross tonnes, carrying an average of 2,600 passengers and 1,000 crew. She was named in May 2022 by Princess Marguerite of the Netherlands, although Rotterdam has been in service since October 2021. So, let's take a look around. Deck 1 consists mostly of cabins, although if we move midships on Deck 1, we encounter Rotterdam's beautiful atrium. This spans three decks and features an incredible spiral structure running all the way through the atrium. The natural light coming in was another great feature, as it really helped make the entire area feel light and airy. On deck one of the atrium, there's the internet cafe, so this is the place to go if you're wanting to stay connected via the computers here during your cruise. Now, if we move up to deck two and jump to the very forward section of the ship, we encounter the two deck tall world stage. In addition to the seats being arranged into a round configuration, another unique feature of this theatre is that the walls are actually LED screens, so during your performance, you can feel totally immersed within it. Throughout your cruise, you will get the opportunity to enjoy a range of shows in this area, including performances by the Step One Dance Company, BBC's Earth in Concert, and many, many more. During the day, there's also the chance to listen to lecturers from various backgrounds, so there will always be something to look forward to in this space. Moving further midships on deck two, we encounter Billboard on board. This looks like such an exciting venue, as you get the chance to listen to two pianists, as together they will both play and sing throughout the evening, often bouncing off one another during performances. Adjacent to it is the Rolling Stone Rock Room, which offers the chance to hear performers sing a variety of songs from the Rolling Stone magazine list of top songs. So I imagine you'll definitely be able to sing along to the music that's being played here and sounds like a lot of fun. Nearby, there's also Notes. This is a dedicated whiskey bar offering over 120 different types to choose from. Moving further midships, we encounter the stunning Lincoln Center stage. On select cruises, musicians from the Lincoln Center of Performing Arts give passengers recitals here, giving you a unique chance to see some of these incredibly talented musicians right in front of you. By night, however, this venue hosts the BB King's All-Star Band, showcasing songs from genres such as soul as well as rock and roll. Adjacent to this venue are some of Rotterdam's retail options, aptly named The Shops, which offer a range of items such as jewellery, clothes, and even Holland America branded souvenirs. 
So if you're fancying a bit of retail therapy, then this is definitely the place for you. Moving midships, we encounter the atrium once again. On this level, we find the Pinnacle Grill, an extra charge speciality restaurant. This is Rotterdam's premium steakhouse, where you get the chance to enjoy a range of high quality steaks and seafood options, such as lobster or crab cakes. As part of our visit, we were kindly invited to dine here for our lunch, and I was really impressed with the food here. The portion sizes were perfect, and each dish was cooked really well. The staff here were also super kind and attentive, so if my experience is anything to go by, you're going to have a fantastic evening here. This level of the atrium also houses another speciality restaurant known as Rudy's Cell de Mer, which offers a range of reimagined French dishes inspired by Rudy's Sodamin. Now leaving the atrium and moving further aft, we encounter the Ocean Bar. This looked like it was the perfect place to enjoy a pre-dinner cocktail whilst looking out towards the sea through the numerous picture windows in this area. Nearby, there is the Half Moon Bar. Now this is unique to Rotterdam and is designed to be a nod to Holland America's long history as there are numerous cocktails here inspired by Holland America's past so definitely something to look out for now, adjacent to this bar is the Club Orange main dining room. This is available for both breakfast and dinner and is exclusive to those who are part of Club Orange. Moving to the very aft of the ship, we encounter the stunning two-tier main dining room. This is a fantastically designed area, feeling light and airy thanks to the numerous windows in this space which lets copious amounts of natural light flood in. It feels like it really sets the scene for the high quality food that you're going to enjoy here and really takes your breath away when you walk in for the first time. This restaurant is included within your fare and they serve breakfast, lunch, afternoon tea and dinner here as well. Moving up to deck 3 and leaving the upper level of the dining room, we pass by the photo shop. This is the place to go if you want to purchase any photos which have been taken during your cruise. There's also the chance to purchase photography equipment if you need it. Moving back into the atrium on its highest level, there's guest relations for all your ship-based queries, as well as the Grand Dutch Cafe. This is a really intriguing space for me, harking back to the Dutch heritage of Holland America. As a result, it features complimentary Dutch snacks, as well as larger sandwiches or pancakes if you want something bigger as well as a variety of hot drinks or alcohol options if you fancy something stronger. Moving further forward, we pass by the upper level of BB Kings and the Lincoln Centre stage. This area features more seating on a balcony level, which is perfect if you fancy watching the evening's proceedings from a higher perspective. Moving further forward, we encounter the casino on board Rotterdam. This seemed to be a decent size with a variety of slot machines and tables on offer here too. In the middle of this space is a spectacular light feature which hangs above a set of spiral stairs which takes you down to deck 2. This was something I was not expecting to find in the middle of the casino so it was a wonderful surprise. Now at the very front of deck 3 is the world stage, but as we've already discussed this, let's move out onto Rotterdam's promenade deck. This is a much appreciated feature as I always enjoy a full wraparound promenade deck on any ship I travel on. However, due to the design of the ship, there are lifeboats on this deck, which means that a good portion of this deck is completely obstructed Although it's not the end of the world, it's a shame nonetheless. This being said, however, there are areas where the view is completely unobstructed, especially at the aft portion of the ship, so there's still a chance to take in those sea views and enjoy the wake of the ship when she's underway. Now decks 4 to 8 consist entirely of cabins, so let's jump up to the forward section of deck 9. This features the fitness centre, which is a well-equipped gym featuring a number of exercise machines as well as things like free weights. Nearby, there's also the greenhouse spa and salon, although sadly I didn't get any footage here. 
Moving midships, we encounter the Lido pool, which definitely felt like a luxurious place to relax in. In addition to a good sized pool, there are three hot tubs in this area, as well as a sea screen, if you fancy watching any movies. The Lido pool also has its own bar, as well as the chance to enjoy extra charge ice cream at the nearby gelato bar. Alternatively, you can grab a range of tasty burgers at the inclusive dive-in. Moving further aft on deck 9, we encounter the Lido Market, which is Rotterdam's buffet, featuring a great range of food options from what we could see. It's included within your fare and is available at breakfast, lunch and dinner. Nestled within the Lido Marketplace is Canaletto, which is an extra charge speciality restaurant showcasing everything Italian. Walking to the very aft of Deck 9, we encounter the Seaview Pool and Bar. This features another good sized pool as well as several hot tubs. In sunnier climes, I imagine that this is the place to be. A quirky little design feature is the fact that a small piece of this deck juts out slightly, which gives you some fantastic views looking all the way down the ship, which I personally really enjoyed. Now climbing up some stairs to deck 10, we encounter more deck space looking over the sea view pool, giving Rotterdam a slightly tiered aft. If you look carefully, you can also spot Carol from Paul and Carol Love to Travel waving to us too. The aft area of Deck 10 also features two speciality restaurants, the first being Tamarind, which explores cuisine from Southeast Asia, China and Japan, as well as the nearby Nami Sushi Bar, although sadly I couldn't get any footage in these areas. If we climb up another set of stairs, we find Rotterdam Sun Deck. This is a wide open area of deck space featuring numerous sunbeds. Nearby, there's also the Sun Deck Bar, so even if you're wanting to improve your tan during a cruise, you're not going to be too far away from grabbing your favourite cocktail. Moving further midships, you pass by Rotterdam's imposing funnel. Now, if you're a lover of all things ship like me, then you've got a great photo opportunity here. Nearby the funnel, there's also the chance to play some traditional deck games such as shuffleboard or quoits. Moving midships on deck 11, there's a sports court as well as a jogging track which runs around the retractable roof of the Lido pool. As the rest of deck 11 is made up of cabins, we'll jump up to deck 12. The forward section of this deck features the Crow's Nest, which is Rotterdam's forward observation lounge, where you can enjoy your favourite drink whilst taking in some panoramic views. Nearby, there's also Exploration Central, where you can discuss and choose shore excursions by Holland America, which will suit you best. Do note this footage is from Rotterdam's sister ship, New Statendam, as this area on Rotterdam was being used for a press event where the captain of Rotterdam exchanged plaques with the mayoress of Plymouth. This was really interesting, as I've never seen a plaque exchange ceremony happen before, so it was quite a unique experience for me. Although it did stop me recording in this area, so apologies for that. Nearby is the Retreat, which is an extra charge area of the ship. In the Retreat, you get the chance to enjoy one of these cabanas, and in doing so, enjoy a secluded area high up on the ship. The retreat also has its own private hot tub, so I think that's a lovely touch if you want to cool off in sunnier climes. Finally, if we jump up a deck, we encounter deck 14, which is a small area of open deck space offering the highest vantage point on the ship. I imagine this would be a brilliant spot for sailaways or periods of scenic cruising. So there you have it, my overview of Holland America's newest ship, Rotterdam and I really hope you enjoyed it. A massive thank you to Holland America for inviting me on this ship for the day. Thank you so much to my kind of cruise for sponsoring me in this video, and thanks to all of you for watching it. I really hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you have, please consider liking and subscribing because it's always appreciated. If you want to know more about Cruising with Matthew, then take a look at my other social media channels, the links are in the description below. I hope that you're all doing well at the moment, and I can't wait to see you in my next video. 
So until next time, this is Cruising with Matthew, and thank you so much for watching.